But so I told you, the thing you have to do when you're solving these problems is you start with you start with the simplest parts, right? Sorry? No, people are getting lazy. I'm not going to put anything on YouTube. We've stopped. <laughs> We've stopped uploading on YouTube. So the <laughs> Well, we, we want to work through the examples ourselves. That's why. No, but when you're stuck, you, when you're stuck, when you're working on a problem and you're stuck, you tell someone, I did this, this is where I'm stuck. Nobody's doing that, right? I have done this, this is where I'm stuck. Okay, so, so here's the thing, right? So we are, we, we're saying this thing has different parts to it. The first part is uh, we prompt, prompt for input from the user, right? The, the second part is we read integer, right? Integer from user, right? Um, the third part is we loop, loop through from zero to input from user, right? And I'll just save this as a example square. So these are the three things we need to do. How do we read input from a user? Well, I mean, we just have to start with the, the stuff that we normally do here, right? Uh, easy stuff here. Um, so prompt uh, read integer. So how do we, how do we prompt? We just say in V0, we put system call code number four, right? And I'm, I'm doing something unorthodox here. I'll just say input uh, number or something. Then obviously in the data section, I need to have the var input number and then um, ask easy. And then I'll just say enter natural number, right? <laughs> now this came up yesterday when Claire was like, but why do we put the full colon there? Well, we can do this, right? Are you happy now? Okay, so, so we prompt this and I told you, when you're working through these problems, do it piecewise and then test it out to see if it works. Always a good idea. So what I'll do is I will say, um, just load, fire up Qt spin here and then just load this thing here. See if it works. It works just fine, right? Just print it out, enter natural number, though natural is not uh, correctly spelled, doesn't matter. Um, and then uh, the next thing I'll do is read the integer. How do we read the integer? System call code number five. Do not memorize this, right? These things will be given to you, uh, but you can memorize them if you want to. Um, so we, we've done the part that, part number one is done. Right, would have prompted the user for, for input here. We print the string that will help um, inform the user what we're asking for and then we read the integer from the user. Then number two now, uh, well, that's number two. Number three is we start looping through. Yes. So on the first one, we don't have to move anything but from the Thank you very much. We should, so it's for good measure we must move. So you know why you'd get away with not moving at this point? Because, uh, well, I guess once you get into the loop you might pollute the values. You might pollute the values, so yes, excellent. Thank you for that, for that uh, contribution. Uh, so we must move the value from V0, values. A for arguments, V for values, right? Return values. Okay, uh, so they told us that we, we must move this. That's what she said. So we will move this from V0, right? And then we will start looping. Start looping, right? Uh, looping is not really that hard. We first of all need to identify the, we go through our five step process. It's like when you're an alcoholic, apparently you go through the step processes, right? But you go through this five step process where we identify the initial values what else do we do? We do the processing, what else do we do? Yes, exactly, thank you. So, 
Loop label is just going to be loop squares. We'll call it loop squares just because, I mean, doesn't matter what name you give it. It's more descriptive that way. We say that when you're dealing with loops, it's always a good idea to start with the condition that you're going to be working with. So in line number 25, we need to specify the condition that will help us break out of that loop. We need the condition to get out of that loop, break out. Otherwise, we will never get out of that loop. You over and over again, you die, you are born, you die, you are born, right? Like they say in the Hinduism. So you want to break out of this loop. How do we break out of that loop? What condition do we need here? That's a question. People, people don't remember the steps we went through. The first initial value is, we're saying we're capturing the value of eight, of the value that the user has entered into eight. This would be like a, the thing we use to break out of the loop. The thing we use to loop two, as we're computing the squares. The other condition we need is the initial value that we're going to have to start with. We know that natural numbers start from zero. So what we will do is we we'll just say in register nine, we'll, we'll load zero. Okay. So we go into the loop. For us to break out of that loop, we, we will move out of that loop when the value we are processing is greater than the item we've looped into. So it's this BGT here. BGT, whatever is going to be in nine, if what is in nine is greater than what is in eight, we shall break out label giving it a more intuitive name here. You will notice here, we're saying, because we are going to loop from zero up to the number the user enters. Effectively, we're saying we will loop for, the first time we start looping, it will be looping from the value that will be nine, which is zero, up to the value the user enters, which is in eight. We shall first of all, once we get into our loop, we check if the value we, st we, we, are, proce the value we are processing is greater than the, the value the, end, the user has entered, right? So in this case, the first time we get into the loop, in iteration number one, it would be zero comma the value that the user has entered. So if the value was four, it would be zero comma four. Is zero greater than four? Of course not, right? So we're checking the condition. The next thing we need to do after we check the condition is we do our processing. And the processing is really closely tied to the problem at hand. The problem says you compute the squares of the numbers, right, in the range. So the processing we need to do is nothing more than just a, a multiplication of the number we're processing by itself. What number are we processing? It's in nine, right? So we shall say mod, we'll put the result in, in register 10, and then we'll multiply the number we're processing, notice in line number 28, we're saying, the number we're processing is going to be nine. So multiply nine by itself and then put the result into 10. Right. Um, and then once we do that, once we put it into 10, because all we're interested in is printing the values as we're looping, why not print the values within the loop itself? So we multiply the number, get the, get the result, put the result into 10 and then print it out, right? How do we print that? Nothing more than just saying uh, uh, V0, comma, one. And then what do we do next? Move into what is in 10. And then Cisco. Right, so, so between, between lines number, so we've multiplied the number by itself and put the result into 10. Between 29 and 31, we're saying just print that number. The number is in 10. For us to print the number, we must move it to A0, why? Because the rules say so. When you, yes, hi. I don't know, let's look at the manual, which is, uh, does anyone have the manual handy? He's saying, is it the mod or the, the more? I've forgotten. It's, it's, the mod. it's a mod? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then if, if it's a mod, then we'll have to fix this. Someone just corrected us. Uh,
pause for a little while, fast forward this on YouTube. Uh, the green card as well here. Let me just check the... Oh. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, what, what, what Kevin was saying is uh, reminding us that, you notice if we use malt, uh, I don't know if people can see malt here. If we use malt, right, um, we, 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 we are not supposed to dump the result in the destination regions. We'll have to work with a move from high or move from low or something, right? So it's MUL, MAL. Thank you very much, sir. All right, so MAL, right? Uh, we change this, doesn't change anything. And then we start printing them out, right? So between lines number 29 up to 31, we're just printing the integer, which is the value that, that is in 10, because it's moved to A0, right? Once we are done processing, at this point we have done, we are done with our processing on the first item, or the item that we are processing in that particular iteration of the loop. What do we do? We must modify the initial value, some of the initial values. In this case, the initial value we must modify is the value that is in nine. Why? Because we want to move to the next natural number in the list, zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to n, specified by the user. How do we move to the next natural number? We add one to the current natural number. The current natural number is in nine, so what we do is we'll say, to what is in nine, add one. Would have modified the initial value in nine here. We're just adding one to what is in nine. Add one to what is in nine, and then put the result into nine, right? Is this making sense? Like, and I know it sounds like it's confusing. What, what are we doing here? Are, what is in nine, get what is in nine, like it's stepwise, right? get what is in nine, add one to it, and then overwrite what was in nine with the answer here. That's what we're saying. Because that's how registers work, right? They're just temporal storage locations. We overwrite values in there, right? With whatever new values you want to use. Uh, also, I was going to mention this in the next lecture series, but everything we've been discussing, everything we're going to discuss in the next lecture series is happening on that small little thing, the CPU. Right? Imagine that. That small little thing. I don't know if you know, they covered the lab where he opened up the machine. Right? Did he show you the? Oh, I thought there's a machine that was brought. I think it did. Okay. Follow it up. CPU, right? Small little thing. Everything we are doing here, these instructions and whatnot, they're happening on the CPU, right? Right. Okay. So once we modify the, the initial value, what do we do? We repeat. How do we repeat? So this is an unconditional branch here, right? Branch to loop squares. Sorry? But what else would we use? We, we are using B here because it's, it's an unconditional branch. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a branch statement that allows you to to branch somewhere without any condition. Remember the difference between a conditional branch and an unconditional branch? A conditional branch requires that the, the, thing you're working, the things you're working with eventually evaluate to what's called, a, it, it has to be a Boolean expression, it must evaluate to yes or no. BGT, one, two. BLT, one, two. BLT, one, two, we evaluate to true or false. Only when that expression evaluates to true will you branch to the label you specified. But with an unconditional branch, unconditional because there's no condition, you just branch to what you specify. Like in this case, we're just saying line number 35, just another way of saying branch is go to this label. Fine, not branch, go to this label, right? Line number 35, go to loop squares. Where's loop squares? It's right here. I come back here and I notice, oh, I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I come back here, go to loop squares, I go to loop squares, right? I check, 
And I will only get out of loop squares when the value I'm processing at that point in time is greater than the number specified, right? So once we do that, we are saying uh, that's it. We break out of the loop and then we need to, you notice at this point in time that we did not have breakout label, so we need to define breakout label, right? And breakout label really can just be, um, I guess, a definition of exiting here. Is this fine? Let's try and see if this works. Hope it works. So, uh, enter a number, I'll just enter 10, right? So it gives us the answer, but obviously it's, it's, it gives us the answer we want quite right, but obviously it's not like uh, in a very readable, it's not printed out in a readable manner now, is it? We could, we could uh, print a carriage return immediately afterwards if we wish, right? Zero, one, four, nine, 16, 25, but uh, like squished together because we didn't specify, we're not printing them one, at a line, one, one line at a time. So all we can do is we can just say, uh, New line character here, new line. The new line character, carriage return, right? The so called enter, the thing that's written end on your keyboard. This is what we're simulating here as this, this. When you press enter on your keyboard, the CPU sees that as a new line, it's a carriage return, a new line character. We'll go to the next line, right? So, which is why, like in this case, we're saying we we'll define a new line character or carriage return backslash n, lowercase lower, uh, lower n, and then after we, print, after we print the integer here, we shall print the new line character. Because it's a string, we shall need to use system call code number four. We just need to load the address into A0 of new line. New line, not list. Not that it matters anyway, we can name it new list, but it's not very intuitive now, is it? Uh, then we, Run this, and then, oh, let's go up to 100, right? Oh, yeah, yeah? So if we say, if the user enters 100, then it will print the squares of the numbers between 0 and 100, including 100, which is why the last one is like, uh, uh, what is 100 times 100? I don't know, right? 